Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. And this week is one I've been waiting for for a long time, doing the biggest upgrades for looks and performance on the Rockster yet. And that would be wheels, tires, and suspension. Alright guys, welcome back. Those of you who have been following will know this is the Rockster. This was was the uh, ugliest Porsche in Australia that I have uh, removed a whole bunch of uh, ugly additions and tried to make it look a much better. Uh, I think the Cayman roof looks fantastic. It's a great upgrade and um, the uh, obviously now it's running the Audi V8 engine. Um, if you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up on the last episode and uh, like always, Please subscribe and, uh, and like the video. It does make a difference. Now, um, I needed a break from working on the Alferrari for a bit, and I've been dying to do this for such a long time, um, is one of the best improvements you can do to a track car is um, wheels, tires, and suspension. Um, way more than power, I think it'll make much more difference having uh, particularly good tires and suspension over um, the uh, the engine upgrade I think will actually make more difference to the uh, lap times than anything else. When I got the car, I had some 19-inch uh, wheels on it with some really bad mismatched tyres. These are uh, uh, some extra wheels I got with my 996 a long time ago that uh, I've just been sitting on here and just moving the car around on. But I have something better up my sleeve. In any case, uh, I think first things first is to get the car up in the air and get all the wheels off, and then we can start talking about what we're gonna do about uh, the whole lot. All right, wheels and tires are off all around, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the uh, rear shocks. That's the, uh, the next part, and shocks and springs. So uh, I'll go through and uh, sort of take you through what I'm doing here, but first things first is uh, removing the brake sensor here and uh, and then start removing things like the uh, um, the drop link. I need to move the knuckle down to get the uh, the shock body out of the uh, out of the knuckle itself. All right, so I've disconnected the brake wear sensor um, and and unplugged from the back of the strut. Then the next is uh, this rear caster rod. I'm going to disconnect it from here. This suspension change is going to throw the wheel alignment out. It's all going to have to be wheel aligned afterwards. Because I'm not changing it from the adjustment end, it shouldn't change a great deal in this case, but um, I'm still going to have to go over it all anyway later. Let's get this, uh, get this apart. Now the lower end of the drop link, and then the lower ball joint. And this ended up coming out reasonably easily, but uh, I did use ball joint separators for some of the others, but a knock on the side also does the job. And the upper drop leak is actually what's clamping the strut on, so loosening that, and the whole thing drops down. All right, that was very straightforward. I've uh, now released the bottom of the shock, so now I need to get it down uh, and get into the back and uh, see how I go getting into the top of the strut tower. Now I've got the Cayman roof on it. One bolt is accessed through a rubber grommet, the other two were very easy to find because the convertible top was already removed. All right, so the old thrashed shock and spring are now out, and what is it I'm going to put in? Well, uh, one of the big things with a track car is adjustability. Basically, being able to uh, adjust everything to suit the conditions and the car as it develops and all the rest of it. And I have chosen to go with uh, Titan suspension. So uh, I've got these Titan coilovers. These are height and damper adjustable, but they also have a whole bunch of ranges of springs you can get and swap in and out. So um, you, can, you can increase stiffness or decrease as needed, um, but these are set up pretty well straight out of the box. I've been working with Titan in the background for a while um, on something else. So we have these now ready to go in. The fronts are camber top adjustable, the rears Obviously are not, so uh, we're going to put the rears in first, so uh, put them back in and it's the reverse of pulling it apart. Alright, so there's the three bolts at the top are all nice and loose, so uh, I can move this around. I have my fitting ring to go on the top, bottom and uh, 
Now we just need to lift this uh, hub up and slide it up and try and get this all connected up to be one thing. All right, so the rears went in pretty easily. Um, I just guesstimated the set of the height of the base of the coilovers by um, feeling underneath and just getting the, the bottom of the coilover level with the, um, the, the rear edge of the, the, the hole in the knuckle. Those of you, any trying it, you'll, you'll work out what I mean if you uh, have a look. That's just what I tried to start with as the, the base setting for the, uh, the bottom of the coil. The top was already set and locked in and they're the same on both sides. So I'm just gonna leave that for the starters as a good base point so that hopefully they're even and, uh, and then I can start adjusting later. So um, let's go and try the front. Okay, so now it's time to start tackling the front. Um, this needs a bit more movement than the rear because uh, the bottom of the shock is much longer on the front. So um, I'm pretty much going to take this whole knuckle off. And to do that, I'm going to start by removing the brake caliper so I can put that up out of the way over the side here and then uh, start tackling other bits and pieces so I can just disconnect it when I'm done. I start by unbolting the caliper and using some cable ties to hang it off to the side so I don't have to bleed the whole thing. Uh, then it's removing more ball joints. All right, next thing is I'm going to pull this control arm out. Um, I, I undo the bolt here completely and uh, over here. These three bolts under here, uh, I just need to loosen off to uh, give myself a little bit of space. So uh, being very careful when you unbolt this drop link, uh, once the other bolts were out, basically that was all that's holding it in and the, uh, I just slid the entire knuckle off and that's sitting down on the ground out of the way. So now we can look at getting rid of our old completely thrashed out shock. That was easy, the three bolts at the top come out. Now, these do have camber adjustment in them. So um, for a baseline, I'm gonna stick them back in where I can see the dirty marks where the old ones were, but it doesn't really matter because it's all gonna be adjusted anyway. Old shocks are out and they are completely thrashed. Um, yeah, so uh, it was definitely about time. So let's uh, do the reverse and put the fronts in and I'll show you what they look like. I start by very loosely attaching the top of the strut so I have some flexibility and movement and then lining up and getting everything aligned. And then it's just the reverse of pulling it apart. So we have uh, the coilers on on both sides at the front and uh, you can see here we have our, our click adjustment at the top uh, coming through the top here so we can adjust the, uh, the dampers on either side. So uh, coilovers are in and looking good. Now uh, I know these brakes look absolutely horrible the way the previous owner repainted them. This is definitely something I'm going to have to upgrade uh, in the future because uh, uh, at the moment, these are still the, this is the base Boxster brakes, and uh, I think these are going to be a nice upgrade for Harry, my 911, and uh, I want to put something bigger on the front here. So that is something that will come in a future episode. But uh, now, before we go any further, I want to bleed these brakes because uh, last time on the track, uh, they were boiling, and I did bleed the brakes, but I forgot... Like on Harry, there is an inner bleeder and an outer bleeder, and I only bled the outers, and I think the old fluid in the inside would just boil, it was boiling and it was a mismatch. So I'm gonna bleed them all again and get some nice new Penrite fluid into them. All right, so I've topped up the brake fluid and um, started doing the bleeding. And uh, the way I've got one of these vacuum bleeders, they're horrible. Um, they never, the, the issue always is, is that when you are sucking the fluid through, as soon as you crack the, uh, the, the nipple on the brake caliper, it sucks in air around the threads and you can never actually see whether you've got all the bubbles out or not. So I'm not a fan of these, this type of bleeder. 
The better type is the pump up uh, bleeders that uh, actually pump air. Um, the better type is the uh, is the type where you actually fill the fill them with the fluid. You pump it up and it pumps the fluid and uh, pressurizes the whole system from the top and pushes the fluid through. So then when you crack the actual nipple on the caliper, you can see whether any bubbles are coming out. I much prefer them. I don't have that system, but uh, I actually have this, which is a radiator pressure tester kit. Uh, that I have a fitting that's the right size. I connect it up to uh, the air pressurized airline and uh, and pump it through. You just have to make sure you don't run the uh, reservoir dry because if you do, you are bleeding the whole lot again. So uh, yeah, I've gone through now working on the furthest caliper and uh, working my way forward. So let's uh, go through and bleed some brakes. So you can actually see the fluid going through the hose here and I give them quite a decent bleed, just wait till a lot of the fluid is out. I did bleed them before the last track day so most of the fluid in the lines is already good dot for fluid but uh, it's nice to give it a decent flush. Alright, all the brakes are bled and now it's time to show you what I have got as far as wheels and tyres go. So, uh, like I mentioned, when I got this car, it had 19 inch genuine uh, Porsche wheels, which I've actually um, sold on to a mate with a Cayman who's really loving them. Uh, I wanted to go with something that was a bit more track focused on this car. Um, for starters, those 19s didn't really fit properly in the, uh, the guards, they were still rubbing like crazy. These may rub a little bit, but hopefully not as much. The, the wheels I've got were actually somebody's uh, 996 GT3 track wheels. So they, I'm pretty sure they're 18 by 8s and 10s. And uh, yes, to get the offset, the offset is different on the Boxster to what the, uh, the GT3s are. I went out and got myself uh, some spacers. I think they're a one inch spacer that I've got for there. I've already got them on the back here, as you can see. So let's show you what I've got. Alright, and these are the wheels I have gone with. These are Oz Racing Allegoritas, which are a nice lightweight weight race wheel. Um, and the tyres I'm going with are Zestino. Um, they're the Gredge 07 RS. So um, some of you might have not have heard of these. I've got uh, lots of uh, track day mates who have been running these for a long time and, uh, and swear by them. Um, this is a 140 treadwear tyre, so it's sort of a good street legal track day tyre, uh, nice and grippy, nice and sticky. Uh, they also do a 240 treadwear version, the, uh, the 07R, um, which is sort of a bit more uh, longevity for the street sort of thing. This, I wanted something that I could still be, they do more aggressive tyres again that are more just, just track uh, slicks, but I wanted something that was still um, street legal because uh, potentially I could look at doing um, some of the, uh, the, the Porsche New South Wales uh, super sprint sort of things and that requires a road legal tyre. So this is what I've gone with. I think it should be uh, a huge upgrade on the track. The difference that tyres make is such, it's, it's bigger than any other single mod you can do on your car is tyres. Um, just look at Formula One, for example, and uh, and the difference between the uh, the the hard tyres and the soft tyres. The uh, the soft, sticky tyres are going to help you go so much faster. And uh, this is this is a huge upgrade. So let's lower this down now. Um, let's see what the offset's like all the way around, and uh, and also see how the height is sitting with the coilovers, because obviously there'll probably be a bit of adjustment to get it to just the happy height that uh, we're looking for. So. Let's do it. Put it down on the ground. The wheels look fantastic, but uh, yeah, the ride height is too high at this stage. That looks like uh, how they were set out of the box. Uh, they already had them all set sort of all the same, which was, which was nice so that they didn't have to try and match them perfectly to start with. At this stage, it's a little bit high, but they're, they're sitting quite evenly, which is, which is really nice. Uh, so now I'm just going to lower them down a bit and, uh, and just see how that goes and uh, see if I can get it sitting at just a nice ride height. So I get a base measurement all the way around and it's all pretty even. So when I remove it, you can see I'm measuring and adjusting the 
bottom ring all the way up until I get to the height I want and using that as my base measurement. By adjusting from the bottom you keep the top spring captive and uh, it's not going to be loose under full droop. This is really starting to look the goods. Uh, definitely no longer the ugliest Porsche in Australia. Um, obviously, I'm still going to paint it later and, uh, and all that sort of stuff. I know there were lots of people talking in the previous episode about turning these side windows into vents, into the engine. The engine's got an engine cover on it, uh, and uh, it already has side scoops that's scooping air straight into the engine bay as it is. So I might enlarge them and do stuff there, but I don't know whether it really needs it at the top, like the GT4 RS. Um, I, I think that they, they're functioning, particularly where everything is at the moment in the engine bay. But that looks good. Uh, the front may be a touch low um, and it's still got to settle out so it will probably get a bit lower so uh, I may be uh, raising the front up. I've done the course adjustment with the uh, the base of the coiler, the base adjuster um, and then the fine tuning you can do so um, if I can get some corner balancing scales and stuff like that I can corner balance and do all that sort of stuff uh, later. With Anyway, that is, uh, that is so much better and uh, we're getting very close to the track day. There's a couple of bits and pieces I still got to do before then um, to get things working. I still haven't got the fans working in the front radiators and uh, just a couple of bits and pieces to tidy up and then we will be getting to the track. Uh, so uh, fingers crossed you guys will join me for that and uh, like always, um, if you need parts for any of your Porsches, make sure you compare prices at PorschePartsByJeff.com first and um, yeah, and hopefully you'll join me on the next one. All right, guys. See ya.